I think it goes without saying that flash games are a cornerstone of the internet anywhere between the early 2000s to early 2010s. There were hundreds upon hundreds of websites dedicated to just hosting flash games because they were just that popular. While none of these ever really matched the quality of actual games on actual consoles at the time, they were still small fun distractions to play from time to time. Finding a good flash game was about as rare as finding a Sonic game where you don't fall through the floor all the time. But what were the best ones? Well today you're going to find out from me telling you. Bit of a quick disclaimer though, I am NOT going to talk about any Flash games based on already existing IPs, so no Ultimate Flash Sonic or Mario Combat, just wholly original Flash games and also waiting a cease and desist. With all that said, I cannot think of a better place to start when talking about the best Flash games, other than what is arguably the biggest Flash game ever. It's the iconic, it's the legendary, it's the timeless, it's... If you know anything about Flash games, you know this game. This isn't just a Flash game. This is THE Flash game. And what do I, a self-proclaimed Flash game scholar, have to say about this game? Eh, nothing much, really. You see, I never played this game, or even watched it when I was younger, because it had blood in it. Blood was scary. So instead of talking about this game, I think it'd be better if I played my gameplay footage where I show my true raw reaction to playing it. Never mind, okay. Go, 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 come on, this has got to be near the end. Oh my god. No, 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 no. Easy. Easiest thing in my life, ignore how long that took. Pokemon training? Oh, hell yeah. Dude, I gotta play as Uncle Ruckus, come on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Oh, easy clap. Jigglypuff is coming for Hello. No, oh, let me help. I don't know how I survived that. Yep, that's fine. Don't tell me he got stuck. Nope. We're still winning. Jesus. Oh. Okay. No, we're still going. Um, okay, maybe not. And these white man Pokemon, wonderful. <laughs> oh, I'm missing my arms, never mind. Yes, yeah, that's, that's fine. Just take it slowly. Take it, take it slowly. Take it slowly. Okay. Oh, shit. You can tell when this was made. Is that like meant to be Mewtwo over there? I can only see his hand poking out. Okay, I guess we just leave. Oh, well, bye! Uh -huh. Yep. Not gonna read that. Oh. They got cutscenes and Happy Wheels? That's crazy. Oh shit, Pikachu. Uh, Pikachu takes drugs, YouTube funny animation. That's fine. Sorry bro, coming through. Thank you. Yep, this is fine. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. We're picking up speed. Fucking backwards long jump up those stairs. Kill that guy. Break through those doors. Oh shit, that was Neo from the Matrix, I think. I can't move forward. I'm gonna die. Never mind, we're underwater now. This game immediately sucks. Probably crap, Lois. The Office, like the TV show, The Office. How did that not break my neck? Okay, that's fine. We're still, still hanging on. No, no, no. stay upright. Stay upright while we're falling. I beg, dude. Easy claps. Starving hobo. Well, I gotta play that. Oh, it's a 2D. 
platformer. Do you want me to dash ain't shit on this? Oh, I need to jump up every step on the ladder individually. This is video games. Run Human Run 2. The long awaited sequel. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. Yep. Am I still alive? Barely. That's fine. That's fine. We're okay. That's survivable. I win. Easy. I actually won multiple times. That's how good I am. I won multiple times at once. I'm just I'm just that good actually. Alright, I gotta pick one last one. Happy Green Hills. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's mix it up a bit. Let's play as um let's play as a uh, James Colton if he wasn't ginger. God, I wish that happened to the real James Corden. Come on, James Corden, you can do it. Come on, James Corden, I believe in you. Ah, oh, shit. Come on, I'm determined to do it with James Corden now. Oh, shit, that's not good. Okay, may maybe... Maybe this isn't the one. Come on, we can do it. Oh. No, no, no. Get out, get out, get out. Get out. You know, mate. <coughs> Maybe Santa can pull through for us. Oh, shit. He's got his... That's fine. See? We, we win. I'm not playing for all that again. Yeah, I feel like for the speech for itself, the game is still fun. It's a simple concept, executed well enough with enough goofiness to mask any of the flaws. I can see why this game infested YouTube for a while. Next up, a game I actually played, Bloons Tower Defense 3. Now this was THE game back in the day. The game itself is synonymous with the genre of tower defense to the point where when I was younger I thought Ninja Kiwi invented the genre. Which besides just being funny because lol I was dumb, it has been made even funnier to me after I recently found out the term tower defense was copyrighted, meaning Ninja Kiwi could not legally call this game Blue's Tower Defense 3, instead shorting it to BTD3. In this game, you command an army of monkeys along with their military grade equipment in order to stop a seemingly infinite supply of balloons from making it down a path towards an exit. You want to stop them because... it's it's a video game. Seriously, throughout every single game in this franchise, I don't think they ever give you a reason as to why this actually matters or why the monkeys hate the balloons. We're given money at the start of the game to buy some towers to place down so they can pop balloons. And you get more money to place more towers by popping balloons and completing rounds. For every balloon you pop, you get one pound, which isn't much at the start. But as the game goes on, the rounds keep adding more balloons, this eventually scales up to the point where you're getting over a thousand pounds per round. But with all this money, what should you buy? Should you buy a monkey that throws darts, an actual medieval weapon, or a Hatsune Miku figurine? Well, if your answer was the third one, you have good taste, but you also haven't been paying attention to anything I've been saying. But if you pick the first or second option, you're also incredibly wrong, because the best tower in the game is the tax shooter. <laughs> That's right, despite this game being known as the monkeys throw darts at balloons game, the best tower in this game has nothing to do with monkeys and isn't even operated by a monkey. Of course, I didn't know this when I played the game, so I'd always use the worst towers because I thought they looked cool. For example, the boomerang monkey, who I thought was awesome by the way, when fully upgraded can pop up to 8 balloons in a single attack. Meanwhile the attack shooter does this off rip and is about the same price to start with. Saying that though, I distinctly remember that whenever I played this game, I'd always play on the same map, on the same difficulty, use the exact same strategy. I'd always place the same towers in the same position on the same rounds without fail. The strategy wasn't even good because I'd always just barely win by spamming the road items, which, speaking of, are quite possibly the most fun part about this game. Instead of a permanent tower that pops balloons, you get a temporary item that sits on the track until the end of the round or until they're used up, whichever comes first. These pretty much always lose you money, which may sound terrible until you actually try using them and they turn this game from mildly challenged to so easy a monkey could beat it. Now if I had to nail down what makes this game so fun to play, it'd have to be the sound effects from popping balloons. It's such a loud, satisfying pop mixed with the crunchiness of flash to create a sound effect so pleasing to the ear that to this day, it's one of my favourite sound effects of all time. Maybe it's because I'm nostalgic for this game, or maybe it's because I have nearly 500 hours in BTD6 along with all the achievements so I might just be a little bit sick of it. 
but I generally prefer the Bloom Pop sound from this game to BTD6's. Speaking of BTD6, yes, in case you didn't know, the Bloom series went on to have three more games, with the sixth one being a juggernaut of the genre and arguably the single most popular tower defense game ever made. All of that would not be possible if not for this game and the games that came before it though. Overall, this game is a true classic. I like how this upgrade, by the way, it costs about as much as like a week's worth of rent in a London apartment. Ignoring the atrocious lag and genuinely embarrassing hit detection at times, this is an iconic Flash game that pretty much everyone with a passing interest in Flash games knows about. If you're wondering why I didn't choose to talk about the 4th or 5th entries in the series, I didn't play those growing up, but in the case of BTD4, maybe that's a good thing. Next up we have Escaping the Prison, a game from the iconic Henry Stickman series. This game, oh my gosh, this game. I only remember ever coming across this once and having vague memories about it, always thinking of it as that one Flash game where you're a stick man and you break out of prison by crawling into the vents, but then you get caught by falling into an office room full of people on accident. Also not really, because there's that courtroom thing. It doesn't quite have the same ring to it. I only found out later this game was actually from a series, so I of course never played any of them until the remastered collection came out and I remembered they existed. The fact these games were so popular and beloved that a remastered collection of them was able to be released with a price tag immediately tells you they weren't just ordinary Flash games. They were on par with the overall quality of actual video games. Escaping a Prison is a game I can only describe as a point and click adventure comedy game, which is a mouthful but I really don't think anything else describes this game properly. Because while the objective may be to well, you know, escape the prison, it is infinitely more fun to fail to watch what shenanigans happen to Henry here. Pretty much all the game's jokes rely on slapstick, often aiming to catch you by surprise by subverting your expectations of what you think the choice you pick will do. You know, like how comedy works. Despite how old this game is, the humour still holds up in my opinion, with most of the jokes at bare minimum getting that out of me. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> The game is extremely short, you can get all the endings in about 10 minutes, but that does not at all detract from this game or its enjoyment factor. So yeah, it is really short, but that short playtime is packed full of a lot of care and love. Check it, even every single fail has a unique bit of text insulting and or making fun of Henry. There's even voice acting! Don't get your hopes up, we've already checked if anything useful. Okay, I didn't say it was good. But overall, Escaping the Prison is truly a classic Flash game that perfectly accomplishes what it sets out to do. Now those games were all well and good, but what if you wanted a game that let you experience your minimum wage fast through dreams? Well if you do, you should probably set your goals a little bit higher man, I mean come on, that's a little low. But also good news, because the Papa's games are here for you. This is a game where you make a pizza in a pizzeria for customers and you are graded based on how well you make the food to their specifications along with how quickly you do it. At least it was briefly about that, because shortly after the success of the first game, Flipline Studios just decided to pump these games out like a factory, making sure to keep the same branding as to entice players of the original game. The strategy sounds foolproof until you realise the way they name these games were just the food you are making with Aria on the end. So we get such great names as Burgeria or Wingeria. As a kid I thought these were real names of real places. In my defence I was thinking to myself, surely they wouldn't make up these names for these Flash games, these names suck. Still doesn't make me any less stupid, but shut up, okay? I used to play these games on my primary school computers where, no joke, these games would run at about 2 FPS. So if you aren't convinced that kids will play literally anything, they will. I know I've barely talked about the gameplay, but that's because that short explanation I gave earlier is practically everything there is to say. You can sometimes play mini games after a shift or decorate your restaurant, but the core gameplay loop between all the games basically never changes. Sometimes they'll add more things that customers can order, which is really only going to complicate things if you're blind. I remember really liking these games, but playing them now, I get bored within 20 minutes. However, that is not to discredit these games at all, as I know there are a lot of games out there, you know, like the cooking genre and all that. If I had to play one of them, I'd probably still pick these, honestly. But what if you don't want to cook food using fire and give customers water to drink? You become the Fire and Water. Fireboy and Water Girl is a 2D co op puzzle platformer starring. <sighs> what are their names again? The objective in each stage is to get both Fireboy and Water Girl to their respective exit doors to end the level, with the optional challenge of picking up colour gems corresponding to both characters or solving puzzles and not having a die. The main gimmick of this game being that Fireboy can collect red gems but can't swim in water, whilst Water Girl can collect blue gems but can't swim in lava, and both of them can't enter the sludge. It's an extremely simple concept with a pretty simple gimmick, and there really isn't too much to the games beside that, but there really doesn't need to be. This game doesn't try to be anything more than a good simple puzzle platformer, and especially for a Flash game, it's fantastic. 
can get genuinely challenging on later stages. I don't mean that this game becomes Kaizo Boy and Bad Design Girl, but you have to actually not be stupid to clear some of these stages. Like I mentioned earlier, this game is co-op, where one player is meant to control Fireboy and another player is meant to control Water Girl with the arrow keys and WASD keys respectively. You don't need to play with two people obviously, but that's not the intended way to play the game, so you're stupid if you don't do it like that. If you don't have someone sitting next to you who you can yell at whenever they die, are you really playing the game? This game is also part of a series, much like some other games previously mentioned, all these being pretty similar games, just differentiating based on their sets of levels, so you really can't go wrong with any of these. Also fun fact, some of these games are on Steam. You can always play the old ones on Blue Maximus Flashpoint, that goes for every game in this video. But if you want to support the developers, there's always the option to. They're dirt cheap too, so you're practically scamming yourself not buying these. I think the best part of the whole game is whenever you die, the characters go, It's beautiful. But now, I've saved the best for last, my personal favourite Flash game, Electric Man 2. Electric Man 2 is a 2D round-based arena beat-em-up where you, the Electric Man, enter into the Voltagen tournament with the goal to defeat all the other contestants and teams to become the ultimate fighter. You do this by breaking every single bone in your opponent's body by either punching them in the face or kicking them so hard that the game goes into slow-mo, which is, in fact, objectively cool. The game also features an absolutely rocking soundtrack, including a bunch of songs that they do not own in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, uh, they don't own any of the songs they have in this game, except for the title screen music and the tutorial music, as far as I can find anyway. Which is a good thing though, because I don't think any title theme in any game hits you as hard as this one does when you boot up the game. Don't get me wrong, the gameplay is pretty simple, and the best strategy is basically just running left and right spamming the jump kick attacks, but it's almost impossible for enemies to hit you while you're doing this. But since it barely does any damage and enemies can duck this move, it makes the game feel as slow as the Sonic Superstars boss. If you're trash at the game that is, because if you're not a coward you'll maul enemies apart in less than a minute. There's even this one move where you front flip over a guy, grab them by the head and hurl them up into the air. If you don't move out of the way when they fall back down they'll hit you and actually hurt you. It's such a small detail, but it's a detail I always remember about this game. There's also these enemies later on who, if left alone, begin to heal themselves, which honestly just gives me more drive to smash their heads in. Speaking of the enemies, for these all being stick figure designs, I actually think some of them have pretty sick designs. These genuinely look awesome. Which is good in multiple ways, because them being so cool makes you feel even cooler for beating the shit out of them. Now you're probably wondering why I'm talking about Electric Man 2 as opposed to any other entry. That's because it's my favourite, and it's also because Electric Man 1 doesn't exist. Yes, seriously. There is no Easter Bunny, there is no Tooth Fairy, there is no Electric Man 1. And I can't find any evidence of it ever existing, nor are there any sequels. I didn't stop the stupid fucking Flash game sites from giving me false hope though. Overall, Electric Man 2 is pure coolness. I love this game so much, and it's such dumb simple fun, and it just makes me do a big dumb silly smile. It is truly the best Flash game.